In a coal-fired plant, a bright yellowish-orange flame in the furnace is a positive indication that combustion is taking place properly. Anything that jeopardizes the combustion process jeopardizes the flame and also jeopardizes the safety of the people in the plant and the plant's ability to produce electricity. If the boiler flame goes out, you have only seconds to respond. In many cases, procedures will indicate that the first steps in dealing with a loss of flame are shutting off all fuel flow to the boiler and either maintaining or increasing airflow to purge the boiler of all combustibles. Unless action is taken immediately, the boiler could explode. When we discussed boiler explosions, we touched on some of the situations that can lead to a loss of flame. In this part of the program, we want to look at some other situations that have the potential for causing a loss of flame. What you can do to avoid a loss of flame. The indications available to you to verify whether the boiler is functioning normally or if a loss of flame has occurred and the action necessary for keeping the boiler under control. There are a number of operating conditions that are common to a plant that have the potential for causing a loss of flame. One example is wet or frozen coal. During wet weather, rain or snow can increase the overall moisture content of coal. In addition to creating handling problems such as freezing and sticking, wet coal is difficult to dry and pulverize. In some cases, this condition can cause blockage in coal pipes, interrupting the flow of fuel to the burners. An alert operator should recognize operating conditions where there is a potential for a loss of flame and take appropriate action to minimize the chances of it occurring. In some cases, this action may require increasing the flow rate or temperature of primary air going to the pulverizer. In other cases, additional igniters or a warm-up burner may be used to ensure proper combustion. Another situation that can cause a boiler flame to go out has to do with the way burners are arranged to support combustion. As this simplified diagram illustrates, burners are usually positioned one above the other. When operating normally, the flames from the burners converge near the center of the furnace. With this arrangement, the flame from each burner helps support combustion on other burners. Here, for example, the bottom burner helps support combustion of fuel from the middle burner, and the middle burner helps support combustion of fuel from both the top and bottom burners. If fuel flow to one burner is interrupted and the flame goes out, it may cause a loss of flame from other burners. In this example, if the middle burner flames out, it can't help support combustion on the top burner or the bottom burner. The result may be that the top burner and bottom burner also go out. In situations where coal is difficult to burn, lighting off igniters or warm-up burners can be used to assist the combustion process. Using additional igniters or warm-up burners is a typical approach to avoiding a loss of flame, especially when there is a potential for the flow of fuel to be interrupted. Now there are other situations that can lead to a loss of flame that the operator will not be able to anticipate. A typical example is a boiler tube rupture. Boiler tubes are subjected to both the intense heat of the furnace and the high pressure of the boiler. On occasion, a tube may rupture, blowing water and steam into the furnace, superheater, or economizer section of the boiler. Depending on the location of the rupture, it may endanger the boiler flame. Ruptures in the furnace area of the boiler are usually the most critical. Ruptures in the area of the secondary superheater may also cause a flame out while a rupture in the area of the primary superheater and economizer will not usually upset the boiler flame. When a boiler tube ruptures, water or steam is released into the boiler under high pressure. If the rupture occurs in the furnace area, it may extinguish the boiler flame. Since tube ruptures usually occur without warning, an operator must be constantly ready to shut off all fuel flow to the burners and purge the boiler of combustibles. Since a tube rupture can cause a loss of flame, an operator needs to know how to verify that there is a boiler flame. Let's go on to look at the indication that an operator uses to verify a loss of flame. An operator in a control room usually has a number of ways to visually verify that there is a flame in the furnace. A television monitor is one example. This monitor is used to observe the boiler flame from the control room and to verify that there is either a flame in the boiler or that a loss of flame has occurred. Mirrors located just outside the control room may also be used to verify that a flame is or is not present in the boiler. Mirrors are usually aligned to allow an operator to see a reflection of the boiler flame through observation windows in the boiler. 
Of course, the most reliable indication of a boiler flame comes from opening an observation door and actually looking inside the furnace. However, if a loss of flame is suspected, you should not attempt to open an inspection door. If a flame out has taken place, opening an inspection door could cause enough of a draft to ignite the combustibles in the boiler and cause an explosion. If you must make a visual inspection to verify a loss of flame, use the inspection windows near the burners. While television monitors, mirrors, and inspection windows allow an operator to actually see inside the boiler, none of these indications is totally foolproof. Mechanical or electronic problems with either the monitor or the television camera in the boiler may give a false indication of a loss of flame. Mirrors used to monitor the boiler flame may from time to time get knocked out of alignment, rendering a false indication. Observation windows near the burners may be blocked by ash or slag, also giving a false indication. Now, the chances of all these indications being false at the same time is very slim. Therefore, it is important to check all available indications when verifying a loss of flame. In addition to visual indications, control room instrumentation can be used to check for a loss of flame. If the boiler flame goes out, steam pressure and temperature will drop. The main steam recorder in the control room will indicate the drop in temperature. A flame out will also upset the flow of air and gas through the boiler, sometimes making balanced draft boilers go positive or pressurized boilers go negative. An operator can monitor this on pressure gauges in the control room. One thing that you need to keep in mind, however, is that a loss of flame is not the only condition that can cause some of these changes. Also, it may take some time for these changes to be indicated on control room instrumentation. In most cases, it is best to use visual indication as the primary means of verifying a loss of flame. As an operator, your best safeguard against a loss of flame is to follow your plant's procedures and carefully monitor control room instrumentation to make certain that all systems are operating properly. You should also make sure that television monitors, mirrors, and observation windows are available and indicating properly. Finally, if you suspect that there is a potential for problems with reliable fuel or airflow, additional igniters or warm-up burners should be used according to procedure. In the event that unusual conditions cause a loss of flame, you need to be able to respond according to your plant's procedures. As we've indicated throughout this program, most procedures will require that at the moment a loss of flame has been verified, fuel flow to the boiler is shut off. And depending on procedures, air flow is either maintained or increased to purge the boiler of all combustibles. Procedures will indicate how long the boiler must be purged and the air flow required to ensure safe conditions. Once fuel flow has been stopped and the boiler purged, most procedures will require the operator to return the boiler to normal operation as rapidly as circumstances will allow. This is to prevent steam pressure from dropping low enough to trip the turbine. Now, in the event that the prevailing conditions make it impossible to return the boiler to normal operation, then the operator must take the appropriate action to trip the turbine. Once the loss of flame has been dealt with properly, the operator should notify supervisory personnel and the load dispatcher. Keeping everyone that depends on your unit for the production of electricity informed will ensure that the supply of electricity to your customers will not be interrupted. In a little while, we'll look at abnormal conditions that may arise from the loss or malfunction of boiler auxiliaries. For now, though, read over the material in your text on the loss of boiler flame and answer the questions. If you want more information on dealing with the loss of flame in your plant, ask your instructor to help you.